We begin talking about red dots on pistols. Is it a fad, is it the future, or is it just a bunch of fiction? Hey guys, my name is Dave Tim. Thank you very much for checking out this video. This video is the first of a series of what I'm anticipating where we're talking about red dot mounted pistols. And you know, there's been a lot of conversation about this in the personal defense community, the law enforcement community, uh, even you know, kind of the tactical community within you know, the last few years. But the reality is this concept is not new. Competitive shooters have been mounting optics and red dots on their pistols for literally a couple of decades. And we're taking some of the lessons learned from that competitive, that shooting sports community, and we're starting to move them towards the personal defense, permit to carry holder, the law enforcement tactical markets. Now, what's really kind of sped this up, in my opinion, is the new availability of certain products on the market. There's great you know, uh, reputation with the you know, Trigicon RMR, which is a very popular series of optic. Um, they work really, really well. They're very rugged. And then we also have some newcomers to the market like this one from Shield. And this is their RMS site. Don't worry, we're gonna have more product focused videos in the future. So we'll have full reviews and first looks on some of the different products out there. This video is not meant to be a review of any one particular product, but kind of talking about the concept as a whole moving forward. So we're kind of getting into this. Uh, this video is, again, part of a journey. We're going to be talking about the pros and cons. And for those of you who don't follow gunsandtactics.com, make sure you check that out. Judah just posted an article not that long ago. We'll put a link in the description below where he did a really great job of outlining a lot of the pros and cons of mounting a red dot on your pistol. Cost is a big one. You have you know, the price of the pistol, $600. And in some cases, you could spend $600 plus on a, a red dot. And then depending on what configuration you have, you may have to get that milled. You may have to add suppressor height sights. And then holster compatibility could be an issue. So those are all hurdles that are, are legitimate hurdles that you have to kind of consider. Is this worth an investment? Additionally, there is going to be a training curve. You are going to have to take some time, do some drills, practice that presentation so you can find that dot efficiently uh, on your presentation. Presentations. You don't want the dot to slow you down. Now it took me, me personally, everyone's eyes are different, but it took me a lot of drills and we'll do a future video on some of the drills that I did that just kind of helped me get more familiar with this. But it took a solid 500 to 1000 rounds where I actually felt comfortable enough where yes, I'm going to carry this on duty. And I was doing a lot of drills with a shot timer, so making sure I could draw, clear all the retention devices, come up, find that dot and get rounds on target in the same amount of time as I was with iron sights. So it, it's it's not just something you're just going to throw on and start carrying. I mean, you, you certainly could do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. You want to feel you know, competent and comfortable with your equipment. And that's, uh, you know, for me, it's not something I take lightly. So let's talk holsters for a little bit. Uh, most holsters on the market, uh, whether it be a concealed carry type holster, uh, inside the waistband, outside the waistband, a lot of them will fit with a red dot, but you obviously have to check. Now with the duty holsters, this has been the big holdup for a lot of law enforcement agencies. Some agencies require a basket weave, some require a level, you know, of, uh, certain levels of retention. And this holster does work, you know, really well for what I needed it to do. And basically I had to modify it so it would fit my 34 with the RMR and all the security retention devices are in place. I can retract the hood, I can draw the pistol, and it works just fine. This has been a pretty good duty setup for me. I'm really excited for the 6360. I think that's a better option. Um, the 6354, I know a lot of guys in the tactical realm are using this holster. It's a level one type holster. It just uses the ALS system, but it does protect the red dot uh, decently well. It doesn't you know, shield it from the top as the 6360 will. It actually has a, a moving hood on it. But this is a good, good holster. It works out really well. It's fast to draw works just fine. So I think now that the law enforcement community is gonna to start to have some options, I think you're gonna see more law enforcement agencies adopt this. And I think we're gonna see more permit to carry holders and private citizens adopt it because of the pros. The main pro is that I can look through the site, focus on my target, and the dot is on my target. I don't have to focus on my front sight, have my rear sight a little fuzzy, have my target a little fuzzy depending on the distance. Now I can just simply present, look through the optic, see my target, focusing on my target, and the dot 
is crisp right on the target. And I think that is a big pro. So is this the future? Is it a fad? Is it just a bunch of fiction? Well, I definitely don't think it's a bunch of fiction. I can definitely see advantages, especially at distance shooting. I was shooting um, this gun, my duty gun, at 100 yards on a piece of steel, and it was really, really easy to do. And I can shoot 100 yards iron sights, but with the red dot, I just noticed it was even faster and easier. Additionally, when I'm doing marksmanship drills, I noticed that every little movement Every little imperfection in my fundamentals is amplified with that dot. You see that dot dancing all around, you really find out quick what you need to work on, and you can really see, oh yeah, that round, I, I yanked that trigger pull, no problem there, identifying that issue. So there's some benefit there. And then the biggest thing, again, is you were focusing on one thing. Similar to the, all the benefits that we've learned on the rifle, putting a red dot on the rifle, now we're gonna start to eventually see these on pistols. So I think, yes, it's not a fad. I don't think it's fiction. I do think it is the future. It's just a matter of cost. It could cost pro, uh, prohibit a lot of people from adopting this? It certainly could. And you know, durability, do we start to truly have duty grade optics? Even the RMR, which is a very ruggedized site, you know, there's a lot of, a serious users out there who note that you know, after about four to 5,000 rounds, it fails. Battery life, things like that. Now, like I said, I have several uh, thousand rounds on this one. I haven't had it fail yet, but other guys that I've talked to tell me, hey, you're just kind of on borrowed time. So it just kind of depends, you know, battery contacts, vibration, uh, hot, cold, all that stuff is really tough on this, you know, and not to mention it's moving back and forth on the slide, you know, and all that recoil and everything else that's being absorbed. Whereas the competition guns would typically mount, uh, mount to the frame and then the slide would move underneath the optics. So that would kind of save some stress on those guns. But again, this is meant to, to be a journey. So I, we're gonna learn it together. I'm still relatively new in this. Uh, other instructors have had it for a while. I've learned lessons from them. But I wanna hear your thoughts. What questions do you have? What videos do you want me to make about red dot pistols? What do you wanna learn about? So if you have questions about red dot pistols, if you have questions about holsters for red dot pistols, if you have questions about drills for red dot pistols or whatever it is, make sure you leave a comment below and we will do future videos on those things. So I hope you found this video helpful and informative. I uh, truly look forward to doing more in the future and look forward to seeing you in more videos. Please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you check out gunsandtactics.com for all the latest in news, uh, reviews, product focused things, things like that, all things related to guns and tactics. It's just a great online magazine. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a great day.